this is kind of like my pride and joy. It's actually a couple babies underneath the parents. If the head is a little bit broader and more squarish, larger, it could be an indicator of male. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I really want to show you this fish that I got that I really cannot capture on camera so far because it's so cryptic. Usually this fish comes out when the light is off. So that's why I have this little headlamp on and let's see if we can find that fish. Nope, does not look like the fish is out. Let me check the back side. I guess I'll check back a little bit later at night or tomorrow morning. It's odd. Usually he's out. His schedule is pretty predictable. So maybe I'll check back a little bit. My tank is a pretty interesting hour. So right now it's about 10 a.m. The light comes on at 6 o'clock and turns off at about 1 o'clock these days. But uh, oh, look at this. This is cool. I'm looking at my jawbreaker mushroom. And I actually noticed quite a few little babies underneath the Grandi's pallies right there. I did not notice this because I guess they were always covered by the pallies. You see uh, underneath the pallies, there's like two little dots right there. So those are little babies from the jawbreaker. And looks like we got two. I know of one. I didn't know I got another one right there too. The problem with these babies is that the um, jawbreaker mushroom gets pretty big uh, when the light is on. So the babies get covered. So I guess that the baby may not get um, a lot of light to grow large. So at some point, I probably need to really carefully pull that rock out and kind of scrape off the babies and kind of mount them onto plugs so I can uh, trade or sell them. Uh, but that's cool. I didn't know I got uh, two extra ones up there. So that is really nice to see. Oh, look at this. We got a little high fin goby with his head peeking out. That's cute. I actually have a love triangle story to tell about this high fin goby that, uh, that I want to share with you guys a little bit later in this video. So be sure not to miss that. All right, I guess we'll go wait and we're going to come back a little bit to see if we can catch a fish in action. Another thing I really want to address is the MPS coral. As you can see, I actually used this opportunity to kind of stuff them full of food. Uh, I use um, LLS, uh, Fish Frenzy. But one thing I'm really happy about with these MPS is that as soon as the food hit the water, uh, tentacles comes out now. And another thing is that it seems like for whatever reason, the shrimp and fish do not attack the um, MPS as much as before when I feed them nowadays. Probably because I stepped up the feeding on them so they're not as hungry. So as a result, I no longer need to use the feeding cup when I feed the MPS. Basically, I just kind of like feed the fish, feed the corals over there first, and while they're busy over there, I feed the MPS and it's been doing fine. So one thing I learned recently about MPS is that they actually appreciate stronger water flow. In the past, I thought they need like solar flow so that it can be easier to capture food, but apparently the stronger flow tells them that food is going to be common, so they'll be expand, uh, ex the, the sort of polyp actually extend a little bit more um, under strong flow. So I'm gonna test that out. Um, so far they've been sitting, uh, they used to be over there, now they're over at this left front corner. So what I'm gonna do now is actually taking these frags out uh, and then I'm gonna try to replace them on the main structure of the rock because this is sitting almost like right in front of the MP40 right here. It gets some nice flow and that's why I have some SPS right here. Here is the MPS island and here we see a little ammo crab right here. This I believe is female and a couple of bubble algae. I'm gonna pull the bubble algae off. Little crab just hopped off. Well, let's add him back to the tank. I'm wearing gloves not because the coral is gonna sting me, it's just because um, I hate the feeling of super glue on my finger, the dry super glue. Um, and that is why. Alright, well, this sun coral popped off pretty easily. You can see the tissue growing all the way to the edge. Um, Still really healthy. And these white stuff is actually shrimps. I didn't realize they did not finish eating. So that's uh, that's a bad move on my part, but hopefully it would not affect the coral too much. But, and here's a fat dendro. In terms of MPS coral, this is kind of like my pride and joy. This fat dendro has been with me for a long time. And I, I feed it pretty sporadically uh, until it went to 135. That's why I went through phases of like uh, receding and then regrowing. And recently really popped off. Look at all these little babies. It took a while for the babies to really grow up, but grow up they did and it's still growing. So probably in a half a year or so, they'll become like full polyps and I'll have a nice chunky fetidendro colony. I really should frag it up because I have some really nice spot I can just simply cut and uh, create new polyps, but I really don't want to do that. I really like to see like large chunky colonies. So we'll see how large we can grow it. So I have some black and brown uh, sun polyps. You can't really see it because I'm wearing like a black gloves on top of like black shirt. Uh, but these guys have not really done too well for me. Polyps still comes out once in a while, but not consistently. So it's really tough to feed them, but hopefully with the new location, higher water flow, that's going to help. Ding. 
next morning. Hey Reefers, now we are bright and early at like 10 a.m. I'm like, I just wipe my face with some cold water, wake up, and here's the guy I want to show you guys. I can't even, I'm not even coherent right now. Look at this little guy. I think it's called the um, white, is that the white spotted or white dotted scoby? It's a, oh, that was a pistol shrimp firing off. Uh, it's a kept bread fish from Beotus that I picked up from uh, Seahorse Savvy um, about five weeks ago. And it took me about two weeks or so before I started seeing this guy. And this guy only come out at the very early morning, which is right now. That's why my face is like, I just splashed my face with cold water. And he disappeared for the rest of the day. It's, this guy is like the most curious guy. What I ended up doing now is actually feed the tank uh, really early in the morning just to make sure you get some food. I mean, of course he's been getting some food, but I just want to be extra careful and extra sure that he does okay. So um, I programmed the auto feeder to run um, early in the morning as well, just to make sure that he gets something. But looking at his stomach and stuff like that, it looks like he is doing well, he is eating well, and hopefully um, he'll get a little more comfortable in the tank to come out a uh, different part of the day instead of just early morning. Another really cryptic guy, is not out yet, but hopefully I'll be able to get him on video as well. By the way, since we have the camera on, I have decided to move the head andro and the sun corals um, to that part of the main structure. Um, I moved them there. I kind of wanted them to hang upside down, but I couldn't really find a good spot. I may tweak the placement a little bit later. I just want to make sure that um, at least they like the flow there. And judging from the pileup extension, seems I don't think they mind. Number one, they don't mind a high flow. And number two, I kind of wish that they open a little bit more often, but we'll see. I mean, it's only been like day, day and a half, so we're gonna give some time to settle in. And again, I just kind of roll downstairs and fed the tank and I just turn on the light. Just want to get this little guy and just so happened that a Look, the fact that the uh, fat dendro is already kind of open like this and the sun coral is just kind of like peeking out, that's a good sign. I think that they do prefer the higher flow, but again, we're gonna keep an eye on them and then um, I'm gonna revisit in a couple days uh, near the end of this video to see how they're doing. All right guys, figure it would be kind of cool to show you guys what the tank looks like under just a tinic. The light is about to shut off any second now, but uh, I was just kind of observing the tank. I do that once in a while, just kind of zone out in front of the tank. And I just realized, I don't think I've ever shown you guys how the tank looks under just a tinic light. Look at all these glows. And of course, we got the crowd favorite, rules whooped up an enemy. This is not some awesome morph, it's just like a run of the mill. Rolls up with an enemy. Although there's some people that said that it could be a shaman. I'm not too well versed with uh, different morphs of bubble tip and enemy. So if you guys know for sure, please let me know whether it is a shaman or just like a good old rose bubble tip and enemy. Either way, they're cool. Uh, we got a few more corals over here and we got a gobi right there who's really shy. I've been trying to get, get him on camera as well. Over here, we got the Euphilia garden, which I was hoping to start building out, uh, but it got expensive really fast. So I'm taking it slow, trying to wait for people to break down the system. Uh, usually that's where the really awesome deals comes in from. We got the Zoa gardens. Uh, Zoa gardens are doing well. I did lose my big chunks of utter chaos, which gutted me. Um, oh, dude, look at this. This is the um, Biotis white bar and goby that I showed you guys a little bit earlier in the video. It kind of blends in a little bit too well. To... I'm kind of surprised to find him on this end. I guess like when the light is about to come off, when the light dims, he just kind of cruise whole tank looking for food. That's surprising. One of the, also one of the brightest core in this, uh, in this tank is also the jawbreaker. Uh, like, I, like I mentioned before, there's actually a couple babies underneath the parents. You can see how, how large it, they actually expanded. So it, they're definitely blocking lights from the babies and I feel like the babies could grow a lot better if I can uh, get them off the rock. So that would be one of my mission possibly this weekend is pull that rock and try to really carefully shave those babies off and mount them on the frag plug. And other really cool things I haven't really talked much about are those clove polyps right there between the gorgonians. They're really bright, but I feel like i um, not really doing them justice because there's not much water currents going there, so I don't get that wave motion, uh, which they'll look fantastic with. You get a little bit like that, but not too much. Um, but in terms of MP40 placement, I think I probably have them in the prime spot for this tank. I could potentially put them in the back and blow it forward, 
but I really want to create this like channels right here, lengthwise of the tank. So I may add one more pump a little bit lower. Fish wise, usually around this time they started tucking themselves in and go to bed. Uh, I think the foul fish is looking for a spot, but uh, they still seems hungry. It's like, it doesn't matter how much I feed them, they still always seems hungry. And since we're looking at this part of the tank, the kryptonite candy cane has been quietly doing well, which I'm really happy about. I feel like the number of heads has kind of doubled in the last uh, five months or so. So that's cool. I think the growth is just gonna get faster and faster. Uh, same thing with the Space Invader Pectinia. I don't really talk about that coral too much these days because um, he's, he's kind of tucked away for now. He used to be front and center right here, but it was a little bit too close for comfort with the addition of the uh, frog spawn, the splattered frog spawn. So I kind of moved him to uh, middle of the tank. They do like medium to low flow or like medium to low light. So I think like that it's pretty happy with that spot. But yeah, let me, even myself, I don't usually get to enjoy this video too often because a lot of times I would just put Leon to bed and then I'll either hop on and play Warzone or I just kind of fall asleep while I was putting Leon to bed. You dads know how it is. But check out the view from this side. Colorful, huh? Maybe I should adjust the time so that the uh, tank light comes on a little bit earlier. Two days later. Our little buddy's with us today, but one thing I want to show you guys real quick is that, look at that, that is what I have been trying to capture on film. We got, oh, let me see if we can get a little bit closer. So we got a pair of high fin goby right there. Look at that. All right, guys, so that was like a really rare sighting of the uh, larger of the two high fin gobies. Uh, they have been super, super cryptic. Oh, dude, look at that. The white spot is actually out. That is a rare sight, actually. Um, true to his nature, it kind of stay in the shade, but the fact that it's out is promising. I just throw some food in the tank. You know what? Maybe let's, let's, let's run another go. I actually hook up my Echo to the Casa power strip. I know it's a hot mess right here. Uh, I took off the GHL mini controller. I feel like it's a little bit too much tack for me at the moment. So I actually use this two of these uh, smart strip. Because of the Alexa app, I'm able to do routines where I can like set something up and then make it pause. Meaning that I turn this on, I pause, and then after um, I think like 20, 30 seconds and then I'll run the stop. So the problem with a lot of the controller I had was that I was having trouble setting like any um, time, time frame under a minute. I mean, there are ways about it, but it's not too obvious. But I switched over to the power strip. I was able to use this pause feature in the power strip and uh, turn the feeders on for under a minute, which is exactly what I want. And so, oh, there we go, there we go. So here, that, here's a larger one. The larger one is way shy. So it's really, really rare to capture him or her on camera. If you guys know how to determine the sex of um, gobies, hyphen gobies to be exact, please let me know. Um, I heard that the head, if the head is a little bit broader and more squarish, larger, it could be an indicator of male, but it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, what was that? Yeah, the larger one seems a little cranky. I assume maybe, I don't know. I don't want to assume it's female, but I don't know what's going on. It's almost like uh, the male did not bring home enough bacon this week, so she's all pissed. That auto feeder unit is expensive. It's like 200 bucks, uh, but I'm starting to really like it. I mean, I can achieve similar things by feeding in the uh, return chamber in the sump, but um, well, technically I could not because of a lot of things going on in the return chamber of the song. So in my situation, this, this Avaz auto feeder actually works out well. There are certain things I wish could be improved, but so far I'm starting to like it more and more as I use it. It's, it's been reliable and it has the benefit of crushing the food that it feeds. Like I have all like flakes and all kinds of different things, but because it has like auger, it's almost like a screw turning. So I feel like it actually crushes the food to smaller pieces before dropping them into the tube and uh, right in front of MP MP40. All right guys, so like I mentioned earlier in this video, there's like a strange love story of uh, the high fin gobies. You notice I have a kind of like a small one. It's actually not that small, but uh, in comparison, it's pretty small. That's uh, down here at the barrels. There was that large one you saw earlier. And once in a while, you actually see another small one that pops up a little bit higher up in the rock. So I actually have three 
hyphen gobies in this tank oh, right there. So that's the third one. So how did I come into this predicament? So the larger one you saw, that was super, super shy. Uh, that actually came from Seahorse Savvy about five weeks ago. It came in as two, uh, possibly a pair, we're not sure. But what I knew was that once I add them to the tank, I've not seen them since. And they disappeared for a good four weeks. Until last week, um, I went to a local fish store and because I have not seen the hyphen gobies for so long, I just assumed that, okay, they may not have made it. And at that time, they have a small aquarium full of these hyphen gobies all paired up. And when I saw them, I was like, all right, you know what? I really like these gobies. I would love to give them another try. And the price was right. They were, I think, like $40 each. So I brought home a pair. But the thing is, like, when we started catching them, all the gobies just kind of got mixed up, so I was not sure if I got a pair or not. There was a little debate. Uh, we are like, oh, we're not 100% sure, but uh, they should be right. Uh, so we came home, and as you have guessed, they kind of just went to the tank and they parted ways. One went left, one went right. We're like, ah, oh, boy. But the funny thing is this, two days later, one of the small ones showed up in the back, and what do we see? One of the larger hyphen goby from Seahorse Savvy followed it, actually paired up, and that's a pair that we saw a little bit earlier, that's like in this barrel. And at that time I was like, what? The hyphen goby survived all these times without me knowing? How? Just like you saw, it was super, super shy, I hardly see it. Uh, when, when she, I just call her. Uh, when she smell food in the water column, she'll come up briefly, grab her fills, and just run right back. But the awkward thing is that the other hyphen goby uh, took residence up front of the tank, uh, somehow made its way all the way around and kind of lived in the same rock structure as the other pair. So that was kind of awkward, but um, hopefully they play nice with each other. I have not seen them actually like try to battle each other, so I think that's a good thing. But um, yeah, so that's that's the story, how I ended up with three hyphen gobies. The other guy moved in too. To your neighborhood? <laughs> it used to be up front. It used to be up front. The pair lives here. The other one lives like right next door. It's like, what the heck? That's so weird. That's my ideal life. Oh yeah, you got one, two, and three now. Perfect. Oh, here's another thing that some of you guys ask. Sexy shrimps. Woo, Leon is mad. We got one, two, and three. They're still kicking. I think it's all the, uh, looks like ladies, is it? No, that's a guy. That's a guy. You can tell by the uh, pink pattern on the uh, abdominal, the tail. Um, the girls have broken band. The pink does not go all the way around, where the male has the uh, full band that goes all the way around the abdominal. At least somebody likes a bubble to anatomy. Clowns, I'm looking at you guys. I think they prefer the leather corals over there. Oh man, Shell those pasta. those vegan chickpeas. <laughs> Not feeling those. Right? Yeah, we are getting ready to watch the second or third presidential debate tonight. It's gonna be... Second. Is it second or third? All right, we're gonna get ready for dinner and then we're gonna watch the uh, second or third presidential debate. Should be interesting. What are you doing? <laughs> Catching some rainwater. 